to Shai Agassi. Welcome to the show. That's it. How are things? Excellent. Tell me. Tell me, tell me about a better place, what this is. We're an uh, uh, electric car operator. If you want to think of, uh, of the phone as a metaphor, mm -hmm. imagine your electric car is like a phone. Right. We don't, we're not Blackberry. Right. We're a TELUS. Oh. But we're nice. You're nice. Yeah. What are you, what are you saying, Shai? Uh, <laughs> so so you, don't, you don't build the cars. Yeah. You, um, we make them uh, convenient and affordable. So we, we put a network of charging points where you can actually, when you park your car, you come back, it's full. Mm -hmm. And we put stations that allow you to switch your battery out if you, if you drive a long distance and put another battery and keep on going. So, we, so the, I, mean, I guess in order for this to happen, you need car companies to actually make electric cars that are viable. That's right. Right. How, how far is that away from being real? Well, we, uh, we've announced our two first uh, car companies in Renault and Nissan um, are making cars. They've actually announced nine different cars for this, from a very small car to a big SUV and a minivan. Fully electric. Fully electric. Only batteries and uh, switchable batteries. So okay. you could. Uh, you well, can... and that's it, right? Because uh, uh, obviously battery technology is what it is, and, and batteries are in a constant state of discharge. So when it's done, it takes forever to recharge. So you're saying it's kind of like instead of pulling into a gas station and filling up gas, you pull in and someone pops out your battery and in goes a new one? It's a machine. It looks like car wash. So you, you go on top of a, a rail and yeah. a, a machine comes up, props your battery, takes it out, a full battery comes in. It takes you about two, three minutes to, to drive. And uh, uh, while you're sitting there and the machine does that, you can order whatever you want to eat and drink and you get it. But don't those car batteries cost like 10 grand? Yeah, they do. So but it's, <laughs> it, it's not, you don't own them. We buy them. Oh, so you own the batteries? Yeah. A battery, so you, you buy the car just like you buy a car today. Right. And instead of, uh, a battery is not really uh, the gas tank that everybody thought of. It's, it's the actual gas. Mm -hmm. And what, what the car companies asked us to do is to buy the 12-year supply of gasoline right. on day one. That scared us off. And so it, get, batteries are, are expensive. It's a $10,000 piece of equipment, but it's cheaper than oil. If you consume it every day, every week, and you pay for it every day, every week, mm -hmm. it actually is cheaper than gasoline. And this, uh, it's, a great, it's a great idea, and I, it, it would be wonderful if, if something like that could be implemented. I know in, in California they spend an awful lot of time talking about the hydrogen highway, mm -hmm. the supposed highway that's supposed, to, that's supposed to have all these stations, filling centers, and it would be easy to travel up and down the coast, uh, the west coast, mm -hmm. and that really hasn't materialized. Mm -hmm. So how do you, because it's not, I mean, you may be, tell us, but... You have to own the towers, and like there's an, an enormous amount of players that have to be involved as well. How, how do you get all of them to play ball? So we've we've looked at it from a perspective of putting all the players together in one place. We we build the stations, we build the uh, we operate the stations, when we build the charge spots. The car companies continue to build cars. Um, the consumers continue to buy cars as they did before. Um, and there's no new science that needs to be discovered, unlike the hydrogen freeway, which depended on science that was always 10, 15 years away. Right. This is all stuff that's on the shelf right now, can be put together. The economics are better than gasoline. And so we can actually go do it today and give a benefit to the consumers. Now, we can make a million acts of green happen if we get a million cars like that here right. in Ontario, right? Yeah, we could. Yeah, but you have to then convince all the people that that that, that would be a good idea. No, that, that's your job. That's me. All right. Yeah. I'll make you give me a car. I will. And I'll tell you. <laughs> the million and one is yours. The million and one is mine. Um, I, I know that hybrid technology had certainly reached a point where where you could go in and buy a couple of cars. It was only a few years ago where there were really only two full hybrids. You could get a Prius or you can get a Ford Escape, um, and they didn't really have a burst in sales until this whole gas thing happened and people's prices went through the roof and people panicked and then it was harder and harder to get a hybrid. How do you get people to say, listen, this car is going to come with a few, you have to relearn in a sense your, your schedule, like you have to learn, you have to plug in all this stuff. How do you get the consumer to, to think this is what I need to do? So two things that are very interesting, I drive an electric car, I drive an electric car for the last uh, uh, year or so. What and do you have, do you have a Zen car? No, I actually bought uh, one of the 1,000 Toyota RAV4 EVs they didn't manage to scrap. Right. Um, and uh, it? it's an amazing experience. Because I have a hybrid, and it's fine, but I, I, I know that uh, you get on the highway, and it doesn't matter. You're still... You're, it's, it's an yeah. amazing experience. I mean, not, not only driving it, which is sort of mind-blowing that you can accelerate without any noise, and, and uh, the, the experience of driving next to a gas station... Yeah. Um, with an electric car is fantastic. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but what you what you start, I mean, the the experience is that you sort of get used to this coming home plugging in. Yeah. What what I found is because that my car is a seventy mile drive car. Right. 
I found out that when I do take the long drives, I always forget to fill up gasoline. Yeah. See, we, we, we grew accustomed to the fact that we're stopping every time, but electric cars actually will make you not stop. You'll yeah. go and go and go. It's like having a, your own uh, contract with your uh, local gas station. They will fill you up. Every right. time you come in, you're top. And that is worth the five seconds you do when you, as you come home or as you go to work to connect because you, you don't stop for five minutes in the cold. Right. 70 miles you can get in your car. Then, and then how long do you have to plug it in to get the, full charge? So these are the old generation. This yeah. is the, the 2000 generation. The new cars go about 120 miles. Um, and since they top off, you, yeah. you, you effectively, unless you're driving a very long distance, one stop, uh, one, you know, nonstop, uh -huh. uh, you don't stop. Uh, you just keep going, going, and going. So if you're living, let's say, within 50 miles from your work, right. um, 70, 80 kilometers from, from work, uh, you could go to work and come back and go to work and come back and never, never see a gas station. Right. Is it a... I'm fascinated by this. The whole, it's, it, you're able to just plug it in, a regular plug? Do you have, like, like watchers have different we, kind of plugs? We, we have a plug that is very, very safe. One of the things that we want to make sure is, is these plugs are going to be in the streets. You don't want a kid to come in put something in and, right. and be able to, to uh, it's the first thing we did is safety. It's, yeah. it's very protected. The, actually, it's not even alive until a car plugged in really? has secured the, the car in the, in the... That's good because you know there's going to be one guy who's really drunk who for, forgot to top off and he's going to try to siphon electricity. Right. He's going to stick that thing in there <laughs> and it's over, right? In your car, it's completely quiet, like the, like the hybrid. Do you ever like mess with bicyclists? You just sort of ride up behind cyclists, and they don't know you're there. <laughs> you, you actually uh, you do it to animals. It's it's uh, totally. it's very it, no, it's scary. And one of the things that we have figured out is you need to be able to download a sound into your car. So there'll be oh. like ringtones, there'll be drive tones, nice. uh, and you'll be able to make your car. You know, you have a big SUV, but it will sound like a, a bicycle. Um, there'll be uh, cars you make them sound like a Ferrari, even though you don't have a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. um, some people have a, a speedboat. Yeah. You, you drive a car, but it makes the sound of a boat. Can you imagine? You're at two in the morning. You're driving home, and all of a sudden, there's an ocean liner behind yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm, gonna I'm gonna get the ocean liner sound. The word sounds like a bad word, but it's not a bad word in this context. Are you a monopoly? Do you have competitors? Like, ultimately, is do you become? the sheiks who control the oil, yeah. if you control this battery technology. We, we ask governments wherever we go to do the same thing. Want to force all the players, and kind of funny because we're the only one right now, but yeah. we, we tell them, force everybody who will come to this market to do two things. One, only use international standards so that nobody can control it. The plug has to be in standard and everybody will be able to, to use that same standard so there's no, no way to lock somebody out. And two, force every network that is created to allow everybody else to access it. So there's open access across the networks. And usually ask us if we're crazy yeah. to be the first ones, but not ask for protection, but ask for sure. openness. And my view is that if, God forbid, we would have two standards coming into the market, we'll have VHS and Betamax, and the consumer will sit back and say, well, I'll take my time. And collectively, we don't have time. Mm -hmm. We ran out of time. We, we, we already did that in the last decades. And yeah. now the only thing we have to do is not to think about how do you make the most profit out of every single consumer, but how do we switch as fast as possible? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you feel it with your electric car. Uh, little things that are important to people, part of the selling features of cars are the zero to 60s, the power. And all, cars represent freedom, but also cars represent power in a lot of ways. And I wonder if the, the, the electric cars are going to have, will there be any limits to, to what we think they can do aside from distance? Our first prototype does zero to 60, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in seven and a half seconds. So that, that wasn't the Tesla, was it? No, no. It, 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 we, we say that. That car, in sort of that, that you know, sub 10 seconds. My mom's Chevette, it took zero to 60, it took about a week. <laughs> you know, just, nothing was happening. Right, so, so if you do zero to 60 at about 10 seconds, that's a $20,000 car. Right. If you need the extra six seconds, that's another $100,000. That makes sense. Okay? It's good to see you, man. Thanks good for coming in. Thank you. Really appreciate it.